okay this morning? Anybody warm in the house? Yeah, me too. Open those back doors, would you guys, please? Let some air into this room. And those of you that are cold, put on another sweater. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. How many know I forgot my glasses? How many know I forgot my glasses? I do. (laughs) I do. Amen. It's all done. Everything that Christ has done for us is done. There's there's nothing left to do. It it is, is, we've we've arrived at a place in Christianity where, where we need received what Christ has done for us. And, and pray, pray not that he would do something for us, but pray thankfulness and gratitude that he is doing something for us. Amen? We're not, we're not orphans. We're not left alone. We're not abandoned. And, and it's the truth. There, there's something that we all in this room, something we all have in common this morning, and I want to speak to us about it, and it's this, that we all got off to a bad start. We all got off to a bad start. And, and, and it's, it's true. We all got troubled, troubled lives when we began it. At birth, we came into a, a sin-filled world, a world that was suffering the consequences for something we didn't do. Well, I look good in both of those. Thank you. For far away, for up close. Amen. But last week we celebrated something. We celebrated a resurrection. And that resurrection, we found out, made all the difference in our lives. The resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah. Amen? Amen. Everybody accept that? That's good news. Amen? Amen. You turn to somebody and tell them, that is good news. That is good news. That is good news. That is good news. But it, it reminded me of something that sometimes, sometimes can get lost. Sometimes, sometimes it does get lost. Something that we somehow come to think about as needing something added to it. Something we, we have to do in completion to what Jesus did. And it's this. Would you turn with me to John this morning? Chapter 19. Father, your word is your word. We're not seeking to change it. We're not seeking to modify it. We're just seeking to believe it in Jesus' name. 19 and verse 30. Jesus is on the cross. He's dying there. And he said that he thirst. And sour wine on a sponge was put on hyssop and lifted to his mouth and When he received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. Everybody say, it is finished. It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. This is it at the cross. It's the sixth statement that Jesus made while he was on that cross. He made seven. This is the sixth on the cross. And he said, it's finished. Our redemption, the price for a sinful and fallen world, had be, been paid completely. Nothing left owed, nothing left to be done, fully and completely. The price for our redemption had been paid. The chains of our slavery of sin have been forever broken. And that's what's written in John. When Jesus says, it is finished, he meant, in both the Greek and the Hebrew, it is finished. Amen? We don't even have to look that word up to know what it means. That his job had been completed. And then Jesus said in his seventh statement following that, in his last breath, he said, Father, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. You know, as, as a 
even as a sinful young man. It was those words that I spoke at my at the bedside of my father when he died. I stood beside him and I looked to heaven and I said, Father, into your hands I commend my father's spirit. I don't know how I remembered those words. I don't exactly know how they were planted in me. I sure wasn't living them. I don't know what prompted me to say them, but somehow standing by his bedside, that's what came out. Father, into your hands I commit my Father's spirit. And I have no idea why I just told you that. I just did. Those words of Jesus, it is finished. They are of so much importance to us this morning because it changes everything for us. There's such a declaration to us in our daily lives. There's nothing that we can add to those words to complete them. They are done. He said it. It's over. It's finished. There's nothing we can add. You and I have now to live in the shadow of an empty cross. Amen? We live in the shadow of an open tomb. That, that it's, it's done for us. God says, now, now, live. Live in so much freedom as you cannot believe. Live. Live in so much power as you cannot believe. Live. Live. Glorify my Father. I give glory to your name, O Lord. Give glory to the Father. You are empowered to give the Father glory. Do you know that? The world can't give Him glory. You are empowered to give Him glory this morning. You are empowered to give Him praise this morning. You are empowered through your life now because Jesus said it was finished. You are now empowered. It's been completed. And that tomb is good and empty. Friends, we're, we're more... We are more free this morning than Satan would allow you to believe. Because he has so confounded not only the world, but God's church into believing that there's something they need to do to access freedom. Something more that they need to do. And it's a lie. And it's a lie. We owe, we owe, so off to work we go. You know, really? Is that the kind of life that, that we're indebted to? It, it shouldn't be. If it is, I'm going to ask you this morning, change that. Change that this morning. When in reality, the debt has been paid. And, and are, you following, are you tracking with me this morning? All right, all right. Don't go to sleep. Because more than often, I hear words of inadequacy. So often in the body of Christ, words of inadequacy, words that reflect lack, words that say, I'm not good enough. I don't have enough. It wasn't enough. There's something more that needs to be paid, and, and I just don't have it in me. Amen? Come on, I hear it. You must hear it also. You know, God wants something from me that I just don't have. Lie, 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 lie absolute lies. I need to flog myself once a week, you know. I need to, I need to crawl up the stairs to that, to that chapel until my knees bleed. There is some penance required of me, some groveling, some, something I must do to myself to cause pain so that, that I can be free. Come on, anybody believe that lie? And I'm telling you what, it's all around the world. Maybe if I do all that, then God will love me. Maybe if I do all that, He'll make me the man or the woman that I've always wanted to be. Maybe if I do all that, He'll grant me the vision that I have. Right. God gave you a vision. He expects you to beat yourself up to get there. Now, you may take a beating getting there, but it won't be God giving you the beating. 
Did I hear amen on that one? Amen. Maybe, 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 maybe if there's pain in my life, maybe if there's penance in my life, that I can pay him back. Man, if you're thinking of paying God back, you better quit it right now. <laughs> you ain't got enough money and you only got one life. Proverbs, Proverbs 12, 25 says that the anxiety of the heart, the anxiety in the heart causes man's depression. But a good word makes it glad. And I want to give you a good word this morning because I want glad hearts. Okay? I want to see smiley faces. Amen. I want to impart a good word to you today that it is finished. And I want to impart that to you in its true context this morning because, because God said. Tell them my son said it's finished. Act like it. So that's what we're doing here this morning. Listen, we've got a life to live, but it isn't a life of payback. Amen. A life now lived in Christ shouts, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can. I can. I can. I can believe. I, I, a, a life that we have to live that reflects Ephesians 2.10, for we are His workmanship. Amen? Amen. Amen. Turn to someone and say, you are God's workmanship. You How'd that feel? Yeah, I, I know, I know by the voice of God that some of you don't believe that. That, that, that there's minds in here that have, been, that, have been, that have been so hammered that it's hard to believe that I am the workmanship of God. You can say it like that. I am the workmanship of God. Ain't he something? Amen. 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 I had a prophet tell me one time, when God made you, he turned to the angels and said, hey, y'all, watch this. <laughs> Amen. And they all went, <laughs> telling you. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, not to work hard. For good works, for good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God has already prepared a way for you and me to be walking. And, he, and he's calling on us to be free enough to walk in what he's called us to walk in. Amen? You may be a CEO of something. Praise God. God put you there. If you think you did it yourself, you are flat wrong this morning. And everybody's going to tell you so. Come on, everybody, say, you're wrong. You're wrong. See, it wasn't you. Because we find ourselves in a place that, that no matter where it is, housewife, secretary, bus driver, prison minister, it doesn't matter. You're there because life worked its way through you to bring you to that place. Is that the place you're going to stay forever? Maybe yes, maybe no. You may be in prison ministry all your life. I don't know. But you're there, and you're there today, and you're there to glorify God. And, and the reason you're there is because it's finished. Jesus said, I don't need payback. I need you to do what the Father is asking you to do. Jesus said, that's all I ever did. I came here, and I did what the Father asked me to do. I said what the Father told me to say. That's all I did. I didn't do my own thing. So if we catch ourselves doing our own thing, we're flat wrong. We're flat wrong. Be because God has a plan. God has a purpose. We go oh, back to that all the time. God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. And, and he, he made it all possible through His Son. And it's His Son Himself who is nailed to a cross, suffering for us, who said, I want you all to know it's finished. Amen? And then He said, take me away. Unto you I commend my spirit. I'm so out of here. I'm so done with this. So the way's been made and the way's been paid. You know, when I was in Israel, we went to Gideon Springs. 
And I'm reminded of Gideon this morning. God asked him to be his man. Amen? I said, Gideon, I need a leader. I need it, and it's you. And, 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 and Gideon said, you remember what Gideon said? Father said, I, want, I need you to be the, my, my finger. I need you to be the finger of God. I need you to be my hand. I need, and what did Gideon say? You got the wrong guy. You got the wrong guy. My family ain't up to it, and I'm the lowest of the family. So you got the wrong guy here. And God says, no, no, I don't. Have you ever sounded something like that? God asked you to do something, and, and you say, oh, you got the wrong guy. I ain't going to do that. I'm not going to teach kindergarten. You think I'm crazy? You think I'm nuts? I need you to go to China. God, I don't want to go to China. I haven't finished. I need you to go pick something up and come back. Let me finish. You know, sometimes we leave, we leave the presence of God, and he ain't done yet. God will start, you know, I, I have a work for you to do in Fresno. <laughs> go to Fresno, and God's going, do you, would you like to know what we're going to do? in Fresno because on the way I need you in Merced so we go to Fresno God says I need you in Merced I thought you said Fresno he said he said I did but Merced's first you know and and we're constantly ping-ponging in our lives running from one thing to the other never always behind the curve you know never getting in front of it and going God why am I always late and Father God says, I was asking myself the same question. You know? <laughs> we'll get there, son. We'll get there, daughter. We've sounded it. Father God will never ask us to do something that he doesn't pave the way for. Amen? And he may pave it with you. <laughs> but, but he paves the way, and he pays the way. He pays the way. I think my lesson was, Man, I wanted a 35 Ford pickup. I mean, I wanted one. I lusted. And I found one. And I asked the Lord, can I have a 35 Ford pickup? He said, sure. So I scrambled, man. I borrowed money. I put everything together. I bought this truck, and it was a millstone around my neck. And so I went back to God. I said, God, you told me I could have a 35 Ford pickup. He said, yes, I did. I did not say I was paying for it. <laughs> you know, if you ever do something like that, ask him if he's going to pay for it first. <laughs> because it does make a difference. If not, you become the servant of the thing. That you have not, that you have not bought, doesn't even belong to you. You haven't paid for it. It's not done. It's not blessed of God. It's just okay with God. You know, I don't want to just be okay with God. I don't know about you this morning. I don't want to just be okay with God. I want to be something more. You know, God did it for Gideon. He did it for Moses. We remember Moses, you know, and and the troubles that he had and. He couldn't talk, and God says, I need you to go be my representative, and he, he weaseled out of it, you know. I don't, I don't talk, talk, talk real good, 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 good. Pharaoh will never listen to me, 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 me. Use my br- 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 brother. When God has called you, then he doesn't need anybody else. He needs you. He needs you. I had a vision one time I've shared with you before. Jesus, we were were in an operating room. Had the big light, you know, and and this body is laying there and it's being operated on. And and the surgeon was Jesus. And the Holy Spirit was with him. And he would turn to the Holy Spirit and he'd say, Gloria, Gloria, 
and he'd look down. And when I looked at the body, the body, I don't know how it works in, in visions, but the body was the world. And so Jesus would put Gloria in the world and then he would take her out and hand her back to the Holy Spirit and say, I need Thomas. And he put Thomas in the world. Listen, friends, he called your name and he put you in the world. And he put us in a world that was free for us to serve him because of what Jesus did on the cross, because of the words, it is finished. We are now enabled to be put into the world and accomplish what God needs in that world through you and me. Wow! I didn't know I was so important. That's another sermon. We accept, we've got to accept our qualification. We are qualified by the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We are qualified. You don't have to qualify. There's no secret handshake. There's no words. There, there's nothing that could be said more than you going to Jesus Christ, dropping on your knees, asking him to come into your life, repenting for your sins, acknowledging what you have done wrong in your life. If there's anything missing from the Christian life is people that have not acknowledged their sinfulness. They've just said, okay, it's gone. But, but what about acknowledging it? What have I done that I am here repenting for? What is it? How have I offended you? David said, how have I offended you, God? How have I offended you, my father? And going to him and, and, and recognizing what's wrong in our lives and receiving that freedom, receiving that salvation from Jesus Christ and then walking empowered in it. Getting up with a bounce in your step and a smile on your face. And going forth and bringing God glory. Bring God, bring God glory if you've got to knock it in the head and drag it. There you go, Father. Skin this one, I'll bring you another one. Got to accept our qualification and move forward, people. Quit saying, I can't do this. I'm not that guy. I'm not tall enough. I'm not big enough. I'm not bold enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not intelligent. I'm, I'm not creative enough. Listen, God's handsome, creative, beautiful, wonderful, and all those things you don't need to be. Okay? We don't need to be. He is. Amen? When we say to God, I'm nothing, just let me be nothing. You heard that? You know, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm okay right where I'm at. Yeah, me and God, we're good, you know. And, and, and just kind of living that mediocre life of a, of a Christian, on, you know, just rocking in the boat, just out on the boat, the water splashing on the side, everything's good, don't nobody storm it. Just move along the way things are. It's smooth. I got bad things happening. I got good things happening. It's all good. It's all going to be okay. Nobody rock the boat. And yet Jesus called us to be boat rockers. Amen. Amen. Mess it up. Mess it up. Change the world. Because Jesus paid the price. Either did or he didn't. And if we believe he did, then that requires something of us. Amen? Our, our heart changes. We're not doing good works for the fun of doing good works. No, he said, because you're saved, because I've done these things for you, out of you will flow. Out of you will flow. Out of you will flow. Because I pour in, out of you will flow. Amen? Amen. So it becomes a natural part of our existence. Not for our own recognition, not for our own medals. I don't need a ch ch chest full of medals. I've been in this war, the other war, the other war. Don't get me wrong, I'm not bad, bad mouthing here. I'm saying I don't need the badges. My crown is in heaven, and so is yours. And the cool thing about it is when Jesus hands you that crown, you're going to turn right around and say, you know what? It was all you. <laughs> It was all you. I'm, I'm good with that. I'm, I'm good with that. And that's why the scriptures, they ask us, 
they ask us to, to encourage one another, to build one another up, to see the things in your life that are a, a gift and to tell you about them, to say, hey, I see, I see a gift. I see a gift in you. And this is what it is. I want to encourage you in it, man. And is there anything I can do? Is there anything I can do out of my gifting to help you in your gifting? And that's how the body of Christ walks in unity. I got my brother Brown, fisherman, extreme back there in the corner. He's smiling now. He calls them to his hook. Extreme, he's, he's gifted, and he, and he wants to share his gift. I was able to take my grandson up there, and he took him out, stood him in the water, in that cold water, and took that fly rod and hook, and, and they fished, and they had a great... I couldn't have done that, but my brother did. So I encouraged him. Brother, would you please use your gift for me? Would you use your gift to benefit me and my family? And, and what'd you say? Yeah, any time. Yeah. Yeah. You know where we're at. Come up. Come up. I'd be glad to do that. So he's just taking that gift and making it available. Well, I blew it now, huh? Uh -huh. (laughs) If any of you want to learn to fly fish, ding! (laughs) There he is right there. There he is. But but the gifts, the gifts in this room are, are, oh, we can't even imagine what's going on in this house. The giftings that God has placed here. And, and a lot of times we don't see it. Well, what's my gift? I don't get it. I, I don't understand. If you don't get it, ask somebody else because they see it. Your brothers and sisters, they see what's going on with you. And if you don't know it and you don't understand it, go to somebody and say, you know, what, what if, what's my gift? What if? And they'll go, oh, really? <laughs> you don't know? And they can move with you and... and and, and ebb and flow with you and, and help you in that endeavor. If you need help, ask for it. If you know God's calling you into a certain area and, 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 and you, need, you need encouragement, you need lifting up, ask for it. Ask for it. I want to encourage someone here this morning, man. It's not I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. It's, it's I give, I give because I truly live. Amen? Because I truly live. I want to encourage somebody here this morning. If you do things out of, for God out of some kind of I owe Him thinking, quit it. I mean quit it right now. Because you don't owe. Jesus finished it for you. What you now owe Him is to buck up to the promise you gave Him that if he would bring salvation into your life and he would come alive in your heart, you would serve him for the rest of your life. That you're responsible for. That you're responsible for. I want to encourage you this morning. Our salvation has been paid for by body and blood. And the victory has been handed over to you and me. Ours is now to live lives of confidence, to break free of the stinking paradigms that hold us back so that we can fully be all that God created us to be. I got a hunch when he created each and every one of you in this building today, he turned to the angels and said, hey, y'all watch this. And they're up there going, now they're gathered together. This is really going to be a mess. to encourage one another in all that Christ is. and let, turn, turn with me to Hebrews, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll fold this up right there. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Chapter 10 and verse 24. Because this is what the body of Christ is, people. This, this, is, this is it right here. Oh, it's it right there. It's it right there. 
Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and, and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. To encourage and to exhort one another. It doesn't always happen well with husbands and wives. I'm just saying, it doesn't always happen well with husbands and wives. But we have the body of Christ here to encourage, to lift up, and to instill in one another the idea that we can actually do what God has called us to do. The good work that he's called us to put our hands to, we can do. And we can do it and bring him glory. Amen? We can. Jesus said it's finished. And that we should be encouragers. And Ephesians, I lied, 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. I said it was going to be my last scripture, but it's not. I got one more I want to share with you. And I think everybody knows this. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. And now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us,